Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Nate with The King of Random, and today we're going to build a laminar flow nozzle. Laminar flow refers to when water is traveling all in exactly one direction with no turbulence, which means that when it exits a nozzle, it has a perfectly smooth stream. So the purpose of the video today is to learn how to build our own laminar flow nozzle without breaking the bank. Here's the supplies we're gonna need for this build. We have the four inch diameter plastic tubing. You can use PVC or ABS. We have two of these test caps. We have a nozzle that attaches to a standard garden hose, some epoxy putty, coffee stirrer straws, some screen door mesh, some scouring pads, and a can of soda. Let's start building. This piece of PVC I have is a little too long. We're only going to need a piece about a foot long, so first I'm just gonna cut this in half so it's a little more manageable. Now I'm going to cut off three rings from the PVC tube, each one about one quarter inch wide. And now we measure for the main section of tube, which should be between 11 and 12 inches long. Now that we've cut our pipe to length, the next step is to drill holes in each of our test caps. We want to use a drill bit that's the same size as the narrow end of the threads. That way it will have a nice tight fit in the end cap. For the pipe fitting I have, I'm using a 3 quarter inch drill bit. Later when we drill the actual nozzle, we're going to be using this 5 8 inch drill bit. Using one of the quarter inch PVC rings you've cut, trace out the inside of the circle onto three of the scouring pads. Cut along the line and you'll have three circles made from the scouring pads. Cut through one of your quarter inch PVC rings. With the PVC rings, we want to figure out how much we need to cut off in order to fit the entire ring inside our PVC tube. Use your first cut ring as a guide to mark on the other two where to cut. Cut out three pieces of screen large enough that you have a little bit of a border around each of your PVC rings. Empty a can of soda and rinse it out well. Using a knife or pair of scissors, cut the top and bottom off of your soda can. Be careful because the jagged edges of the can might be sharp. You'll want an unbent piece of the can wall about three inches square. Sandwich your piece of aluminum between two smooth boards and screw it together tight, making sure your screws go through your sheet of metal. This piece of aluminum is going to be your nozzle where the water comes out. Here's where we're going to use that 5 8 inch drill bit. Drill through the top board and the layer of metal beneath it. By screwing into the metal sheet, you should prevent any movement and get a nice clean cut. Once you finish drilling, undo the screws and remove your sheet of aluminum. Trim the excess so you have about a one inch border around the hole you drilled. Drilling has probably left a little bit of a burr on the aluminum, so we want to try and sand that off using a very high grit sandpaper. First I'm going to sand it with 400 grit sandpaper and then with some triple lot steel wool. All right guys, quick update. We have now cut, prepped, and prepared all of our parts, and it's time to start assembling our laminar flow nozzle. First, we wanna take our three sponges and press them inside the tube, leaving about an inch and a half at the bottom. Next, we want to attach one of our screens to the ring and press that into the tube. Place the screen over the tube and then squeeze the ring together so that the gap is closed. Using a knife or scissors, remove the excess screen, but leave a small border around it. Being careful to apply pressure to the whole ring at once, lower it and the screen down until it is pressed up against the sponges. Now what we're going to do is fill the whole tube with the coffee stirrer straws. You'll want to make sure all of your straws are pointing the same direction so that the water will flow smoothly. If any of your straws go in sideways, make sure you straighten it out. We also want to make sure that the entire opening is full of straws, so keep putting them in until there's no gaps left. Some people have tried building these with regular drinking straws and that might work pretty well too, but I think it works better using these coffee straws. 
So with the sponges and the straws in place, we have a device that will mostly get the water traveling in one smooth direction, but we have a little bit of space after the straws and we wanna make sure that the water doesn't start picking up any turbulence. We're gonna put in two more layers of the screens held in by the PVC rings, which should help prevent the water from building up any turbulence before it leaves the nozzle. This first ring you want to push almost all the way down to the straws, leaving a gap of only about a quarter of an inch. This second ring you only want to have about one inch below the top of the tube. Now we're going to attach our flow nozzle to our end cap. We'll attach a piece of electrical tape to the flow nozzle, but before we secure it on, flip it over and line it up to make sure that the flow nozzle hole is right in the center of the hole that's drilled into your end cap. Press the tape onto the end cap to secure it in place. Tape securely all the way around the flow nozzle so that there are no exposed edges. Now that our flow nozzle is attached to our cap, we're going to fit that over our pipe. It's probably a pretty tight fit, but with a little work, you should be able to fit the test cap into the end of the pipe. The last step before we test this is to attach our hose nozzle to the other end cap and attach that to the pipe as well. If you're having a hard time fitting the hose nozzle into the hole you've drilled into the cap, you can expand it a little bit by using some sandpaper. Once your nozzle is attached to the end cap, press the end cap down into the pipe. There you have it, our laminar flow nozzle is now ready for a test fire before we make all of the connections permanent. Okay, so we're gonna hook our laminar flow device up and I've removed the cap because we wanna see the water as it's rising up. You can see, just look how smooth this water is. You can see through it almost perfectly because there's no disturbance to it. You can see some air bubbles are getting trapped underneath the screen and even down on top of the straws. So I'm just gonna tip it, try and get those air bubbles to gather and come out. That is not laminar flow. All right, I'm gonna turn the water off, put the cap back on, and then see how this is flowing out. Okay, you can already see this is working pretty well. Look at this little stream. It's, a, it's just this nice clear jet you can easily see right through it. I'm gonna try turning up the pressure just a little bit. All right, once again, that's a higher pressure. It's still going pretty well. There is a little bit of waviness right as it's coming out of the nozzle. So one thing I'm just gonna try, I'm gonna turn off the water and I'm gonna sand down the nozzle just a little bit with some high grit sandpaper to smooth it out just a tiny bit more. Feeling all the way around that, that's feeling pretty smooth by now. There we go, that is a nice clean stream. You can see right through it, it looks really good. Let's seal this thing up and make all of the connections permanent. All right, as an update, we've now tested this and after a little bit of additional sanding on the nozzle to make it extra smooth, it's working pretty well. You probably saw that a little bit of water was seeping out the edges in the hose connector spot. So now what we want to do is seal up all of the connections so that it doesn't leak at all. This two-part epoxy putty is strong, waterproof, and holds up under pressure. Just mix the two parts together until you have a uniform color, and then you'll have a minute or two to apply it to whatever needs to be glued. All right, now that our putty is mixed, we're gonna take half of it and use it on the outside and half of it on the inside of our hose nozzle. While the putty is curing on the hose nozzle, we're gonna use a little bit more of it on the top of the cap to hold that onto the device. oozing out all over as I squeeze this cap down onto the pipe. I'm gonna use a little bit of extra putty to make sure that the gaps are really well filled. That's one side attached, now let's glue on the other one. The putty holding all of our nozzle pieces connected is now dry and we're gonna sand it just a little bit to clean up the edges. This is all sealed up and ready to go, but before we hook it up to the hose again, you know here at the King of Random, we like to decorate. All right, we've got this bad boy all decorated. Let's go hook it up to the hose again. Here we go, our working laminar flow nozzle. You can see, look how clean this whole line of arc is. It almost looks like a piece of glass, but of course, if you touch it, it splatters everywhere. 
A couple of tips if you're trying to troubleshoot your laminar flow device because you're not getting a nice smooth flow out of it. You'll want to be sure that you have at least two or three of those sponges down at the bottom because they really help slow the water down so that the straws can do their job of straightening all the water out. You'll want to make sure that the straws are all packed in tightly, touching the sides of the tube and that there are no gaps and they aren't moving around in there. The pieces of screen will really help prevent any turbulence from building up in the space between the straws and the end of the nozzle. And lastly, probably the most important thing is that your nozzle has to be extremely smooth. It's hard to spend too much time on this. If you can feel even the slightest divot or burr or scratch in the aluminum nozzle, then that's going to affect the water flow. All right, one of the main indicators that you have a good laminar flow is that your water stays together as a cohesive stream all the way to the end. Look at how the water coming out of this nozzle is still in a tight stream even when it's hitting the ground. When the water is truly moving with a laminar flow, it's amazing how clear it gets. Check this out. There you have it, the laminar flow nozzle. As you saw, it works pretty well at low pressure. At higher pressure, the stream does start to get a little bit wonky. And I know one of the reasons for that is higher pressure, especially out of a garden hose, is a little less consistent. I have plans for the future to look into what I can do to make it so that we have more consistent pressure so that at higher pressures, our stream of water will travel farther. Let's do a quick recap of the build. We took a piece of PVC and added a hose intake valve. The water is slowed down by running through some sponges and it's then straightened out by running through some coffee stirring straws. There are a couple layers of screen mesh at the end to prevent any turbulence from building up in the dead space after the straws in the tube. It then exits through a perfectly round, super smooth hole, all of which gives us a perfectly smooth stream of water with no turbulence, so it almost looks like a stream of glass coming out of the nozzle. There you have it, you now know how to build your very own laminar flow nozzle without breaking the bank. We are hoping that we can revisit this in the future to figure out how to add a little more pressure and maybe some fancy things like putting lights into the stream of water. Thanks for joining us for this project today and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then. There's a giant fly. Now it's a dead fly. And lo, the clouds did part and the sun did smile down upon them really confusing their shot. It's just like a drinking fountain with a lot of water coming out. Hey guys, just jumping in here for a second to let you know that King of Random t-shirts are coming back. By your popular demand, we're bringing them back the day after Thanksgiving, that's November 24th. So keep your eyes peeled here on YouTube and watch my other social media where we'll be posting links to where you can get your own. Progression is uncomfortable and it's okay to feel awkward sometimes because it means you're pushing the boundaries on your comfort bubble. Right now, the King of Random brand is pushing the boundaries of our bubble and expanding as well. And while we're in this transition phase, I just want to thank you for all you're doing to support us.